Thanks for keeping it with us on NTV Live Stories. We now continue with the doctor as he tells us how unique and different their political agenda was going to be since he had quite an experience with the past regimes. Yes, I had lived through these governments, but you know, the ills that had affected our country were clear to me. And um, in those early years, you know, I started seeing these um, dangers creeping in. Yeah. And, um, and, and it really made me quite anxious. And, uh, and I started, you know, questioning why, why, how come, you know, this thing is happening this way? How come, you know, we are tolerating this? How come? And at the time I was indeed possibly naive because I believed that um, we were, that the assumption that I operated under was that we were all with the same objectives and well intentioned. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it didn't take long before, you know, I was rudely awakened from that uh, uh, kind of uh, um, imagination and, uh, you know, realized the, the actual reality that we were living in and that indeed all of us, while we were in the bush and suffered and many people died, that we had completely different um, aspirations, different objectives. Uh, it became very clear to me earlier than most uh, when we were in the government. Right about now, we're entering the beautiful Rukunjiri district. Join me as we pay a visit to Dr. Chiza Besige's ancestral home, where he was born and raised. Like a true African son, retired Colonel Chiza Besige has surely not forgotten his roots. About five kilometers from Rukunjiri Trading Center is Besige's exquisite country home. Just adjacent to his ancestral is his magnificent house. This house where Besige was raised has been in existence for over 60 years and is still as intact. With a flash of delight, he shows us around. The vintage furniture inside is still decent, and the shocker is the bed on which he was born is still as good. Actually, this is where I was born. He continues to take us around the land on which he went to school. His primary school still does exist, and as we go forward, we keep gaining followers on our trail. It's only evident that people here celebrate their own, and his uncle can attest to this. You being an uncle to Dr. Lesige, tell, tell us a little bit of who Lesige was then, as a young boy. Lesige was born 1956. Okay. His father is called Moses and the mother Marlon Chufefe. So when he grew up, he was a very good child who was brought up by a teacher. The mother was a teacher and the father was a policeman. So he grew in a family which was a bit okay. A decent family. A decent family. Okay. So from there he went to school. After P7, he went to Kitante Hill School. So he stayed with his uncle 
who is my third brother okay. at Chile Road Police Station. That's where they were residing. Then after one year, he got a room in Hugorobe Hostel. Then up to S4. How was he as a child then? Was he friendly to other children around him? He was a very good, uh, intelligent child. Okay. And friendly to almost everybody. I can see even up to now he's still a friendly man. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, his parents died when he was very still young. So, he's the one who managed to look after his father's properties and look after his young brothers and sisters. What do you think about the current vestige now? Current vestige now mm. is a man who can push things go forward. Mm. And what do you think of him as a leader if he ever becomes president of Uganda? What should we expect from him? Uh, I know this James will become a president of Uganda. He's not a man of... He's not a good person. He's satisfied with what he has. Mm. Yeah? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all we had from Mr. Mperechi Jonathan, an uncle to Dr. Chiza Besije, who now slope down and see his farm and also visit his ancestral home. As we head for the farm, we pass by the graveyard and we pay our respects to the deceased. So, yeah, this is my dad's, born 1915, died 68. So this one is of my mom, okay. and that one is also of another brand, and this one is my daughter. Yeah. She was called Carol. Mm, Abdi Carol. Okay. Mm. So this is our farmland going up there. we proceed to the plantations and ranch. The healthy breed of cattle is gracefully grazing. What brings you here if you to come here? Family functions. Um, sometimes I come for political work, <laughs> uh, to have meetings, political meetings. Uh, sometimes it is, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, funerals of friends and relatives and... Um, but all in all, I don't think I come... I come... For maybe... Pleasure. Maybe at most I come six times a year. Um, so it's, it's not often that I come here now. Okay. Do you ever think of um, coming back to stay home and leave the hustle of Kampala and the tear gas? Well, definitely. I intend to retire here. When, when will that be? Well, I hope that it can be soon. I would have retired if uh, <laughs> Mr. Mseven had not chosen to subvert our mission of democratizing Uganda. Okay. I, was, I had been pressing to retire not only from the army, but to retire to my private life. Mm. And um, so I hope now, anyway, even age will not allow me to stay out there for long. I, I don't intend to hang in, uh, in town till I'm 90s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I hope to retire uh, back to our village at some stage, yeah. And uh, how about farming? Is this a passion you have to do or you do it for commercial, um, commercial purposes? Actually, a bit of both. 
uh, it's uh, I think a good uh, way to earn uh, but it's also gratifying um, to see things that you plant grow or to, th to see animals that you rear, produce and uh, grow in front of you it's, it gives a sense, it has a sense of, uh, uh, of, 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 of satisfaction yes. um, but at the end of the day the bottom line is you also want to get something from it mm. it's not just a hobby yeah, power has, they refused to extend the power. <laughs> in spite of being in the municipality, we have, we have no power. <laughs>